Hello guys, Winston here. Since I didn't go home this weekend to play with my little CNC, I figured this would be a good week to install the Inkscape plugin G-Code tools to try out. It's been on my list of programs to play around with for a while now, especially since it's free. Quick little disclaimer, I don't consider myself to be Inkscape or G-Code tools proficient, so if you see something I can improve on, please do share your tips in the comments down below. Alright, so here's how to get started with G-Code tools. To install the plugin, you'll want to swing by cncclub.ru and go to the Inkscape G-Code Tools thread by a Russian bloke named Nick. Find the latest release and extract it to your Inkscape Extensions folder. The location of this folder will vary depending on your operating system, but on Windows it's in Inkscape's share directory. Extract all of the individual files straight into the extension folder, and don't bother organizing them into their own folder like you see here. Open up Inkscape and create a vector path to play around with. Here I have a pre-made snowman shape that I'm going to be using, but you can make some basic geometry or even text to engrave. As long as you can convert it into a path, it should work fine. To set up your milling job, start off by putting down orientation points. Set your surface height to zero and your Z depth to however deep you want to mill. In my case, I'm shooting for one centimeter. You'll see two points placed at the bottom of your canvas. Next, you'll want to program in some basic information about your cutting tool. Go to G-Code Tools, Library, and pick Tool Type. You can use the default, but I like to play with as few variables as possible. Hit Apply, and a window of parameters will be inserted into your canvas. Use the Text tool to edit the values. Click on your Path to Mill, and select Path to G-Code from the drop-down menu. I have no idea what these options do, but what you want to change is in the Preferences tab. Here you can set a file name as well as the export directory, which you'll have to change if you're not in Linux. Go back to the Path to G-Code Tools tab and hit Apply to generate your cutting path. Since I didn't have my CNC around, I used OpenScam to preview the G-Code. As you can see, there's clearly a snowman-shaped cutout being displayed, and it does indeed cut to a depth of one centimeter. With this technique down, you can mill out custom nameplates and impress your coworkers. Now, here's where this video gets a little more questionable. I wanted to see if I could mill a pocket instead of simply tracing a path. I started with a fresh snowman and inserted orientation points and tool parameters like before. Then, I went to the Area option in the drop-down and played around with the parameters. A positive area width mills out the region on the inside of a closed path. The Area Tool Overlap identifies what percentage of your end mill you want intruding into already cut regions. Now I tried setting up the preferences like I did for the Path to G-Code option before, but when I hit Apply, nothing happened. What you'll actually have to do is select the cutting paths G-Code Tools drew on your canvas. You might also want to ungroup everything first. Don't include the outer perimeter of your shape if you want the milled profile to fit within your original sketch. I would recommend deselecting it instead of deleting it like I did. With these trajectories selected, do a path to G-Code operation like we did earlier, and export. As you can see in open scam, the resulting G-Code methodically disembowels a snowman shape from your stock material. There's a bit of inefficiency in the path generation that you can probably avoid with smarter use of the settings and G-code tools, but other than that, it seems to work just fine. One setting I didn't select, but you'll definitely want to do, is truncate all of your decimals to four places using the post-processor options. Overall, I think G-code tools is an effective plugin that allows you to use Inkscape as your one-stop shop for basic to intermediate milling jobs. The only downside, I think, is that it's a little more daunting to wrap your head around than, say, MakerCam. But if you don't like the imprecise nature of dragging things around on a grid in a browser, and you want some finer controls over where to place shapes and paths, G-Code Tools is a viable option. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.